This is Minecraft as we know and love it. And this is my attempt at recreating the charming visuals of the Minecraft trailers in game. It has been over a year since I published the first version of this video and after playing a lot of Minecraft with this visual makeover, I've added mods, removed mods and tweaked a bunch of settings to lock the look in even more. So here's my updated mod pack to make Minecraft look like the trailers. This time around, I'm going to be adding all these mods and resource packs together into a Modrinth mod pack using Fabric as the mod loader. The foundation of this look begins with the resource pack and this time you have a few options. First up, we have the tried and true bare bones pack by Robopants. This resource pack perfectly captures that simplified style in the Minecraft trailers and has been a popular pack for a very long time. Your other option is a pack by Diamond Isn't Here called Trailers Vision. This pack attempts to recreate every texture from the trailer in exact detail, which is amazing and overall I think they've done a really good job. Each of these packs has its pros and cons, but I'll leave that to you to decide which you prefer. Next up, we're going to breathe some new life into the mobs with fresh animations by Fresh Alex, paired with the compatibility resource pack by Specimen. If I was ever stranded on an island and I could only pick one thing to take with me, it would be the Fresh Animations resource pack, no doubt. Everything comes to life with these animations, from silly little chickens to getting side-eyed by villagers with the iron golem shuffling around in the background. Each mob animated begins to tell its own story and takes us a little closer to whatever was going on in this 1.14 trailer. Seeing this shot right here always makes me a little bit sad. Please Mohyang, please. We, we want more flowery flowers. Also, this villager has mad moves. To run fresh animations, you are going to need a few other mods, so let's do some housekeeping real quick. In the last video, we used Optifine, which adds a ton of different features, and I love it, but a lot of people in the comments said that I should switch to Sodium instead. So if you want to go that route, you'll need Sodium, Iris shaders, Entity texture features, Entity model features, CIT resown, Continuity, Lithium, Indium, and Starlight. Let's also add in mod menu and cloth config so we can tweak the mod settings later if we need to. While we're on the topic of animation, I've also added Nif Spiders by Nefaria because if we pause the Trails and Tails trailer right here, this mod makes spiders even creepier. Combined with fresh animations, it, this almost feels like an Australia simulator. Spiders now face the surface that they're climbing on rather than just floating up and down the walls and it just looks awesome but creepy. And of course, we're adding not enough animations by TR7ZW. This mod adds a whole range of simple but effective player animations that fit perfectly into the vanilla style. Food now gets lifted up to your face when you go to eat it, just like in real life. Climbing ladders and crawling look pretty cool too, and now you can even row the boat. But now it's particle time, starting with visuality by Pink Gusick. This mod adds a bunch of fun little particle effects like shiny armor and bones falling off when you hit a skeleton. Not all of them match the trailer vibe, so if you want, you can turn off the ones that you don't want in the config. In fact, most of the mods in this list can be tweaked and adjusted in their own config files. Next, we have Cave Dust by Liz is Tired. Very subtle, but this adds a beautiful ambience to caves, similar to that of the floating ash of the Basalt Deltas. Simple, but very effective. Moving on, we have Particle Rain by Picard. This simple mod replaces the default rain with some particle effects. In addition to snow and rain, deserts now have sandstorms, and mesas have red sandstorms. Makes sense, right? Rounding out the particle section is Make Bubbles Pop by Shipcraft. Super simple idea, but it adds a whole lot of value to the aquatic exploration part of the game. Not only do bubbles pop and rise realistically to the surface, but opening chests and barrels release bubbles as well as underwater explosions. In the previous version of this pack, we used the effective mod by Dr. Rat, but sadly it isn't up to date with the latest versions of Minecraft. So to replace it, we're going to be using Wakes by Gobby56. This mod simulates interactions with water, whether that be swimming or rowing a boat. Overall, it just makes being in the water a little more satisfying. In the film industry, it is often said that sound makes up 50% of the picture. So for this edition of the pack, we're going to be adding a few mods that audibly liven up the world. The first is Presence Footsteps by Solace, which adds new and more dynamic sounds for every block the player walks on. When combined with Sound Physics Remastered by Henkel Max, you will have a rich, immersive 3D sound world that makes movement so much more exciting. 
Next is Ambient Sounds by CreativeMD. As the name suggests, this mod adds ambient sounds, unique to each biome to create a more immersive feeling when traveling between biome types. The sounds also heighten the environment they're in. Jungles feel more lush, deserts feel sandier, and mountains feel higher. This mod makes exploring so much more satisfying and for the purpose of this mod pack, it brings the world to life in the same way adding sound effects to an animated trailer does. Pause the video right there. This scene where Steve and Alex are fighting the swarm of nether mobs has this different combat animation, so I thought we could add the better combat mod by Salt Molnar, which takes some of the melee combat system from Minecraft Dungeons and adds it to the vanilla game, and it's super fun. For starters, you get a bunch of really cool animations which make you want to spend more time in third person. You can also dual wield weapons and perform combos too, which makes for a really refreshing vanilla combat experience without straying too far from what we know. Lastly, we have probably the second most important part of this look, which is the shaders. My preferred shader for this is still BSL by Capped Tatsu. In my previous video, some people suggested that I use other shaders like complementary in place of BSL. So rather than breaking down my exact settings, I'm going to show you which features to look for in a shader so that you can use whatever shader you want to try and recreate this look. If you want my exact settings, I'll have a download link in the description. So first up, the thing that's gonna make the biggest difference is clouds. If you hop into your shader settings and look for something that's like atmospheric or cloud settings, most shaders will have like a volumetric type cloud that looks kind of realistic. We want squares, we want vanilla, so go for that option. One thing that a lot of shaders do is add this kind of waviness to the plants. And if you look at the trailers, they don't have that. So we're gonna go into animations and we're gonna turn off everything pretty much for all the plants, all the foliage, water, fire, lava, that stuff's okay. But all the plants and foliage, we want that off. We want it static. You'll notice in the trailers, the sky often has a really deep, rich color. Um, and one thing I love about BSL is the sky config. You can choose the density and the exposure of the sky for the, both the daytime and the nighttime, as well as the weather. It's really cool, I love it. So yeah, I try and uh, turn the brightness of the sky down, and I think that looks really good. I've been kind of imming and ahhing a little bit on this next one, but I think I've finally settled on a decision, and that is subsurface scattering. If you go into materials, you do have some options there. With this setting turned on, you're gonna see something that looks like a glowing edge, which is a simulation of the light passing through the layer, the, the surface layer of the block and kind of scattering inside it. It looks cool, but I don't think it's the right look for this recreation. The next setting is ambient occlusion. This adds a soft shadow around surface contact points or intersections. If I turn it on and crank it up, this is what it looks like. And this is without it. If you look at the trailers closely, you'll see that it's either very minimal or non-existent, which was fascinating to me, and it gives it this sort of soft, flat look. And that's what we're trying to go for, so I turned it off. See these light rays? We want that. A little bit of that is nice, but what you don't want is lens flares. So if you have a camera settings with uh, like lens flares, you want to turn that off. You also want to turn your bloom strength down if you've got a shader that has a really heavy bloom, um, and turn the contrast up as well. A little bit is nice, but not too much. We just want a little bit of that glowing edge around the light blocks. I've spent so much time tweaking the colors on the shader and BSL makes it so easy. It's amazing. It has this color section, which is really powerful. You can go in and change. You can tweak the direct light and the ambient light for every different part of the day, which is amazing. It also gives you options to tweak the colors of the nether biomes, um, as well as the block lights, water. It's amazing. This one section alone makes it such a standout shader for me. And now when you put all those things together, we have my attempt at making Minecraft look like the trailer. If there's any mods that you think fit perfectly into this aesthetic, this look, this style, comment them down below. Just in closing, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to you guys, anyone that's watched one of my videos, anyone that's commented, anyone that sort of joined the community, the Discord, the Minecraft server. The previous version of this video now has over 7 million views, which is an absurd number. There are more views on that video than there are people that live in my country, which is, I just cannot comprehend. But because of that video, it has radically impacted my life and my channel. I've met some amazing people, I've made some amazing friends, and I cannot be more grateful for that. So thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you in the next one.